Okay, so uh, the learning objective. Uh, no, the last week we just went like just trying to build a, a hierarchical model uh, without predictors. Today we will just add predictors, which is quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, then we'll evaluate both hierarchical and non-hierarchical model and use the hierarchical model. We'll build two hierarchical models and we'll use the best one to do posterior prediction. Quick presentation of the data sets. <clears throat> uh, it's still from the race. We already like um, use it, I think. So it's 33 runners uh, that's run like I, um, let me see, like we have, 33, yeah, we have 33 runners and they run it um, and we have 185 run from them. So we have a clear hierarchy, like every runner obviously can be a group. And what we are measuring is like the, the net time for them running this race. It's a 10 mile run, run. I think it's in, yeah, it's in DC. Okay. So yeah, we have 36 runners and 180 rows. Uh, and uh, we will try to do a model uh, from uh, predict like the running time according to the hedge and uh, with the grouping variable. Uh, so we have Kiko as the, um, the, the runner because they are individual. Okay. First we'll build uh, uh, a complete pooling um, model option. So we will just do not consider link between uh, the running time. We will not consider like pruners, uh, their run could be correlated. So here we are trying to predict. So the Y EG is the running uh, time in minutes. Uh, here Y EG is for G runners and Y race. And this running time will follow a normal distribution. Uh, uh, that uh, will take like a normal distribution from obviously two parameters like the mean and the standard deviation. I mean the um, the variance. Sorry. Uh, and the mean, <clears throat> and because like we want to predict um, the effect of the age on the running time. We will include that on um, predicting the mean. So this is the second equation, like the mean um, mean uh, of race um, of, of time will be like uh, some intercept and some coefficient times y e g, which is the age for uh, a specific runners at one time. Uh, like that, we define like we have like um, <clears throat> we define global parameters for um, this um, this uh, equation that will be like uh, the <clears throat> the intercept, which is bt beta uh, zero. Um, remember that uh, it's uh, centered here. That's why it's zero. And uh, the same, like it will be like a normal distribution with because it's centered, it started zero, and uh, with the variance. I'm still like do not catch it this uh, huge uh, variance, but I guess I, I misunderstood something. And then uh, we will use like uh, same a normal distribution as a prior for uh, our um, coefficients uh, related to the edges. Um, well, it's a coefficient, so it's it either have no effect, zero or positive or negative effect. And uh, to add it, like for like the um, the standard deviation of our um, of our uh, normal distribution on the top, like the first one, we'll use like the exponential one because like uh, the variation can only be positive. And uh, remember, like the Macalaret's train, like currently it's trendy to use exponential distribution for that. So we use it. Okay. So no, no, no time. This is what we have basically done, like last week. So I do not want to spend too much time on it. We get it. So we have one first model that kind of will be our, one of our benchmark. So move on. So no. Uh -huh. So be ready. 
I don't know. So we 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 will do build two model. One will um, will make the intercept vary, and the other one we will make the intercept and the edge coefficient vary. So the first one is more simple. Uh, we will uh, want to have um, our intercept taken into account that runner are related because they are the same person. So how do we do that? Um, so <clears throat> it's a hierarchical model. So we build it through layers. The first layers is the within group. So basically one runner. So Imagine like uh, this is the no uh, pool model, like where we build a model for every runner. Uh, so we added a bunch of G uh, on the previous equation. No, uh, it's not anymore a normal distribution from a global mean, but for a global, uh, for a mean for every runner. And obviously the standard deviation is the same. I mean, the variance, yes. And uh, we can still, uh, and we added also like the, for, so this mean, this specific mean of every runners depend of um, their, <clears throat> their uh, intercept. And, um, but we still keep the edge coefficient as global. See, so there's no uh, B uh, one G here. Okay. So how do we implement our hierarchical model between runners? Do someone have any idea? Oops, yep, 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 yep. Like which of our current parameters, I think I have spoiled it, but uh, B zero G, B one and sigma Y, uh, do we need to model to the next layers to get into account that every runners are related? Int, it's in the title. OK. Uh, this is our intercept. <laughs> I have to tell you about it. Uh, each runner and uh, uh, B0 is our intercept for each runner. And you follow normal distribution, this is here, uh, with the global average of intercept B0 and a new standard uh, between group variabilities. So this is also a new uh, sigma that we need to implement. Another quiz time. For which model parameters uh, must we uh, for which model parameter must we specify prior in the final layers of our hierarchical regression model? So remember, uh, we can have all of them here probably. Uh, yeah, I know, kind of. So I will, I will, I will give you like a pass on it. But uh, so the first two layers, the first layer is basically we build the within group. The second layer is already building like uh, the relationship between the runner, between like basically the within group. And then the last layers is basically building uh, the priors that every of these layers take. So we need like uh, on this one. <clears throat> also remember uh, this one can also be translated. Um, this one, the beta OG can also be translated as beta O plus B O G. Like it can also be like a regression. Uh, let me show you if you do not remember. Is it here? Do I have it? Uh, this is complete. This is no forward. Uh, um, yes, I have it here. See, so we can also translate like the mu g as mu plus beta, or like the beta o, which we want to translate as beta uh, mu uh, beta o g. So the beta uh, specific for if runners as the global beta o, the global intercept plus the variation uh, between each runners. Do I speak like uh, foreign languages, or is it good? Let's go back to this. This is useful to understand that because at one point, what the, uh, was the uh, package gives you is sometimes one of these two and you have to rebuild it. You have to build the, the beta 
OG from uh, the beta O and the BOG, which is like the, so we have to build the intercept for each runners from the global intercept plus the, the variation. Function do that for you. <clears throat> okay, so I haven't like complete them, but like we need like obviously the beta OC doesn't change. We will no need uh, to add, this doesn't change, but I mean, and we will need like to specify the variation between groups and the variation within groups. Okay, what are our assumptions? Uh, every, what happened in every group uh, is independent for another group. So it, if I can say that like uh, the running time, <clears throat> uh, the effects of age, no, uh, the, there is no correlation between what happened in, uh, a runner is not following another runners. I don't know if it makes sense, but like the running time is not related to another running time. They could do the race uh, alone, and then we can do the race alone, and it's it do not impact. At least it's not. We cannot see it. Obviously, like probably running together will have impact uh, on their race uh, running time, but here we assume no. The structure of the relationship. We are still assuming a linear re relationship between the age and the running time. Uh, <clears throat> using um, the structure of the viability within group, um, this is the normally assumption we make. Like the, I think this is like not not too much a big deal. Uh, within one group, uh, the running time is is fluctuating around some mean with the standard deviations following a normal distribution. And this is the same for the between group. I haven't like write it by the way. So <clears throat> turning the priors, this is stuff that I will find difficult. So we kind of know like running 10, 10 miles is around 80 to 100 minutes. So I understand the mean, but I still do not understand the variance, uh, which seems big, but I mean, who cares it's a prior. Uh, we just know like, I don't know, like you, kind of uh, the time increase when you are growing old by like something like go to like uh, alpha minutes to nearly five minutes. So this gives you like uh, a prior for beta one, the coefficient. And then um, for this two, we'll go with, uh, we have no, concrete ID or this uh, fluctuate. So we will go with very weekly priors. I haven't written them. Let me see. Why? Which were the other one? This is this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we just reused like the exponential, the same one. And we use like an even broader uh, exponential um, uh, priors for the for the variation, um, which is the variation uh, of the um, intercept. So yeah, sigma O is a variation of the intercept, and beta O is an intercept. I don't know if I was clear on that. And beta one is the coefficient. Okay, yeah, nothing new. I think just one stuff that we didn't know is like you can understand GLMR uh, function. You can add this line uh, prior PD equal true, which will just run uh, the model without uh, taking into the data and will just generate um, simulation on the prior on the prior you have put, which is nice. So let's go back like so. Well, yes, this formula. So Net is the running time. It will depend of age plus uh, one. That's mean like basically we'll not take, uh, we'll not, we'll, we, we want to keep the age um, global uh, and grouping from the runners. Okay, that is running, family is the Gaussian. And, and here we just like put inside the bios uh, priors. Just this one uh, will be explained uh, in this chapter. So this was this one, like we let it, uh, the past chapters, we'll explain it later. 
this one was quite quick to run. <clears throat> and then uh, we can like, I haven't reproduced all the graph, uh, but we can see like on our prior, we are kind of obviously it follows uh, us like, at the end, you will have some things that look normal, but you have like a bunch of others like uh, not normal uh, distribution. So it's good, I guess. You have a huge diversity of options. I will say on the, the prior like allow uh, a lot of, vi uh, of viability on the running time. So some like, you know, some runners are very consistent. Others are very like, can change a lot uh you can you can even see like uh, we have negative running time which make less sense but this could probably be corrected i guess <clears throat> okay so now we have like doing our priors we will do now do the posterior simulation and analysis this is something what we didn't know so when you have like for example run um the, the prior analysis like what we have done before you can update the model you have use it so we update like the running model one prior with like no the priors uh pd is false and then you you will uh, use the data that we already specified um, on the first call is it good okay so press summaries uh you can feel free to do like the MCMC check. I haven't do it here. It's quite a huge chapters. Uh, you have to take into account that the outputs, uh, the data output of the, the function is a bit different. So it's have like a colon that's intercept, which in our model is beta O. The aged coefficient is beta one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's intuitive. No, the B intercept runner uh, semicolon. Uh, J uh, correspond to B zero G, which uh, in our model uh, is like uh, maybe I can I can maybe it's better if I can I put it bigger now like that maybe better where are you here uh, so it produces B O G which is the variation between the, the specific uh, intercept for runner min minus the global um, intercept. So you have to be careful. Uh, this is why like, we'll have to, to process the data if we want to, to do it. The sigma here is just like the, <clears throat> the variation um, within group. And the sigma runner intercept slash intercept, uh, the runner will be specified, uh, will be like the um, variation of our intercept. Okay. Uh, posterior analysis of the global. First, I think like they always do the same and I, I like this approach. So you first analyze the global relationship, then you go between and within group. Because like you can like uh, analyze like basically like well first what do you have like the like the the beta like just the, the classic uh, let's say linear uh, model you want to to know so you want to know the intercept and the effect of age and here like the intercept uh, like go like um, a lot but uh, it's not the centered intercept so i do not know too much how to interpret it like obviously when you are zero you kind of <laughs> you do not run uh, 10 miles uh and the edge now of like uh older you are uh slower you are gonna run which uh i didn't i i sp uh, i went quickly on the um, complete pulled uh, model but the complete pool model like do not uh, produce too much uh, was totally like uh, even like it was even slightly negative so like older you were faster you run which kind of be interested interesting but so finally runner are slowing down with age okay now that we have done like the analysis on the global level we'll do like the analysis of group specific relationship so the runners 
So we have a bit of uh, data wrangling from like what the MCMC produce to get um, this equation. So like the intercept from one runner's uh, time, the global uh, edge, uh, the global coefficient edge time, the uh, time, the edge, which like I said, is B uh, beta OG is equal to beta O plus the um, B OG, which is like the variation uh, from each um, runner, not variation uh, of the intercepts between runners. So for that, uh, you are like using this model. The, the if you, I don't know if you have checked like what's the structure of an object that's uh, MCMC return, but it's quite complicated. It's basically instead of uh, all the operation, uh, a lot of stuff. So you have this nicely. Uh, so spread draw is will basically like gathers uh, the intercept and the runners into one column. Then you will use it to mutate. Uh, to calculate like the runner intercept, so the beta OG from like the global intercept plus the um, B specific to each runners. So then you will clean like what you don't want and, and use it to calculate a medium. And uh, okay, I'm not showing it to you, but like uh, you have two different very kind of runners. Uh, this is like the you get it like from the intercept, and this is the intercept uh, with its boundaries. So you see like uh, very different intercepts. So hopefully our model will be better. Uh, if you want, you can also here we are go, just. Uh, yes? Can you go? Uh, sorry, I'm interrupting. Sure. Can, can you go back up to the draw part? Uh, so where? Where is it? I don't, don't see. So are you lost in the global analysis or in the in the uh, so this, the global analysis, the group specific relationship? Yeah. So th this part, like the global analysis, is just like basically like the kind of we can we can go back to the. Uh, complete pool model to compare it. Like uh, this is like, if we take into account, like, uh, I mean, we do not take into account the viability. I mean, we are taking it into account, but yeah, it doesn't display it. You, we, do, we do do it. And here, like, <clears throat> this is for every runners, we are gonna calculate their intercept, specific intercept. So like current, the, the complete pooling option is like drawing you an intercept and uh, a slope, uh, rated so here you have like the running time here you have the hedges and uh it's drawing you like one big linear model and uh, without taking into account the relationship uh that's one runners have run through various races and here uh in our model we are taking the article model we are taking that into account and here we are just examining examining the um, the intercept uh, the specific intercept and the specific linear model for every runners is it good so see this is like the g g is for runner so it could be one runner one or it could be 12 so it would be runner 12 and we'll specially focus on the intercept because this is what we are making uh, fluctuate in this model because like we're still keeping like the global, I mean, not the global, but like the beta one doesn't uh, take into account the, the article. Is it good? Um, so they, they have a different start. Just, yeah, it's just a model of a different slope, yes. But uh, the coefficients, no, it's a different intercept and the same slope. Yeah, I mean, the, the intercept. This is the intercept. Beta O is the intercept, and beta 1 is the slope. And the slope will be the same for every runner, by definition. This is how we, we, we quoted it.
Is it better? Was was I unclear? It's a random intercepts model. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know it's 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 a lot for just a linear model, but <laughs> okay. So if we if we know like uh, take like two runners, like the four and the five, and just draw uh, one hundred um, possible simulation from uh, our MCMC, we get this uh, result. So we have like runner four and runner five, and you can see like what we are like. An example of what we are like drawing from our MCMC related to what the data we have. So it's it covers kind of the viability, I guess. Okay, now uh, what we want to do is gonna see how the viability um, is between the group. So how does the viability go? So the reason is inside a runner, like runner one is doing like 10 races. So this is viability within. And now we are gonna check our runner's viability. Go um, good. So what we see is like uh so the runners are deep, like you have like the standard deviation uh, between between runners is uh 30 minutes. And <clears throat> With with a standard deviation of five minutes, so let's say something like eighteen to something like that. So we can we can calculate uh, what we have done, like the between viability uh, and the within viability, and we have one more viability between runners, which makes sense than within runners. So eighty six percent of the viability is explained between runners, and only like. 14% are explained within runners. Is it good? This is just what we have seen last week. So this was our first model. Yeah. So I repeat, in this model, we just uh, take into, we just um, see like the, to my understanding, maybe I'm wrong, like we just uh, uh, see the, the, we just changing the intercept within um, is still within uh, from the, uh, within runners. Now the next one we will buy will uh, do a buy uh, will buying the intercept and the slopes because like as you see uh, they do not share the same slopes. Currently, like we will all have like every runners will be like kind of the same. Just the, inter just the intercepts will be different. So we'll have a bunch of stuff like that. Okay, quiz. No, this one I will maybe ask it. How can we modify our random intercept model to recognize that the rate at which running time change with age might vary from runner to runner? Change the slope. Yeah. <laughs> we'll change the slope. See, it, it, it's, you have a lot of verbiage. I mean, you have a lot of, um, but if you write it on a piece of papers uh, and take it slowly, it's it's not too difficult. I mean, it's not too difficult. Yes. So this is where we are. Where, and then we just add uh, a g on the beta one. So now every age coefficient, every slope will uh, be uh, dependent of the runner. So that means that we will have like also to have uh, to define it some way. So it will follow like this, this, this is the same that last model, like the intercept depending, I mean, will be like following a normal distribution, uh, following a mean of uh, intercept and the standard deviation of intercepts. And we'll have like the beta one G, which will uh, follow a normal distribution, which we have like a mean of all the, um, uh, the, the the edge the slope and uh, a standard deviation of the slope, I mean variance. Sorry, but here it's complicated a bit. Why? Because um, every runners like they're the same, so their intercept and uh, edge. I mean the, the the slope can be related. In fact, they are correlated. 
So we cannot drill two um, independent um, normal distribution. We have to build a joint normal model for both. This is it. So what is a joint normal model? We'll go slowly into it. This is normal. Uh, so this is a, a no, this model will like have two means, like the beta O and beta one. And we'll have like a covariance matrix. So the relation between every, <coughs> every um, parameters there, those parameters uh, will be stars into it. So this covariance matrix, uh, so basically like you can just, this is the, oh, uh, beta, the standard deviation of um, zero, so the, of the intercepts uh, with the standard deviation of the intercept. So it's basically the variance of the intercept. This is the same. And yeah, this is basically like the standard deviation of um, the slope with the, we are just like making them, I don't know if I'm clear. But like, this is just the variance of them because we are just, this is the matrix is like, it's two by two, so it's just like the two we have two parameters. So only this part was difficult, at least to me, to understand. So we we'll use rho as the correlation between um, between the intercept and the slope, and we can write it as the so the correlation times the standard deviation of the intercept times the standard deviation of the slope. I had to Google it. <laughs> so this is basically because like the correlation is a normalized, I mean, yeah, you can probably say it's, a, it's should we say, yeah, no, it's 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 a centered cover correlation. So basically like the correlation, this is a row, the correlation of X and Y is basically the covariance divided by the standard deviation of X and Y. So if you take into account that uh, we are like want to have like the covariation, basically like the correlation between uh, B0 and B1, uh, if you time it by this, you found the same results. Is it good? Like just write it on a piece of paper, like rho is defined here. So the covariance between X and Y and X and Y like we, this is zero and one. I should have changed it to, to make it more clear. Uh, and it gives you that. Okay. A uh, few examples to help us. A strong negative correlation between the intercept and the slope. Uh, if we start with a small intercept, let's say someone like uh, that's uh, a very, uh, uh, let's see if it's small intercept, that's been like the run time is low. Uh, smaller you start, either they go. That's been like the um, slope will be like, like that, very strong. If uh, we have a strong positive correlation with small intercept, smaller you start, mean like lower we go. And if we have no correlation, X and Y do the life. Like it's will just the simple uh, no relation. Quiz. Okay, maybe this one will help you. So the slope and the, no, the intercept beta O and beta one, the slope are negatively correlated. What of this option should we, that makes sense. So now start with slower, here with higher baseline and also tend to slow down at more rapid states. This is one option. The rate at which runners slow down over time isn't associated with how fast the start out. Obviously, you can go with that one. And runners that start out faster here with a lower baseline tend to slow down at a more rapid speed. Which one is correct? If uh, I wasn't speaking, like if I was clear. <laughs> I know I haven't put the cats, but. Are they negatively associated? They are negatively correlated, yes. So higher beta O is how quick the slope 
should go. So the 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 B says uh, the rate at which runners uh, slow down over time isn't associated with how fast the run they start out. You go with B. No, Fredeka, no. <laughs> No, they are associated by this idea. Like you are, you are basically saying like you have a co covariance. Like a co you can you can like replace it with correlation, uh, non normalized, uh, not not. Well, some they are negatively correlated. That means is the they tend to slow down at a more rapid rate, yep. or they tend to slow down and uh, oh. No, this no. is the. I ah, think okay. you they start out slower or, or faster. So uh, that means that runners that both uh, that start fast because it's negative correlated tend to okay. slow down at more rapid rapid rate. Okay. This is a negative correlation. So faster you are, slower you go down. And uh, if they are positively correlated, that will be the reverse. Mm -hmm. They start slow. So the low low numbers, so they go. So the the, I mean, I could replace it with apple and bananas. Uh, like um, apples okay. and bananas are negatively correlated. If I have like a huge amount of apple, I will lo have low numbers of bananas. Uh, and if uh, they are positively correlated, if I have huge numbers of banana, I will have huge numbers of apple. So this is uh, runners that start slow uh, will tend to slow down at a more rapid pace. Yeah, I should have looked at the 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 two which are very similar, and so the third was absolutely <laughs> too. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a, this is a trick <laughs> exam trick. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Okay, and also like one specific stuff. If sigma one, so if like the. Um, <clears throat> If like the variation of our uh, edge coefficients is equal to zero, meaning like we do not have a vi uh, variation of edge, uh, the edge have no is not related to the runner basically. Uh, that's mean like we are gonna back back to the random intercept model. So this is like easy. Uh, okay. Um, no snap, don't refresh now. Uh, but how do we uh, get our joint prior model? So I cannot tell you I have understand everything, but I, I'm trying to make it more easy for you to get it. So this is gonna, this is where we are gonna explain this like decomposition of uh, covariance. Remember, like in our stan uh, GLMR function, we are calling it. So this is our prior covariance. So what we are speaking now is the prior covariance. And uh, it's to do it, we are decomposing it. So we're gonna do a decomposition of covariance. <clears throat> Remember, this is our matrix of covariance. And we will decompose it in three components. And yeah, the three components, they are called R, TO, and P. R will be basically just R is for rho. This is uh, the greatly later we are using it, which will basically care only about the um, correlation. So we care about the variability uh, of uh, both coefficient, both parameters, like both bit, the, the variability of beta O and the variability of beta 1. And um, P uh, will be like the relationship between them. So for R, we are using a lay one dot. So this ma matrix is here, like can be easily decomposed. I mean, not by me, but uh, they have done the operation. I, I kind of understand it. Uh, and this by and three components, and this three component more or less co correspond to that. And we can use some specific priors for every of these components. So the matrices will be decomposed in three components where we will use pri specific priors and specific distribution to set it up. The first one is the Lewandowski Kuro with that Joe, 
as known as LKG, not like the people. And uh, it takes only one parameters, eta. Uh, and these parameters, it's mean pa parameters because it's a parameters parameters. Uh, the name is uh, a regularization parameters. So if you remember correctly, this is the reg one here. Uh, and if these parameters is bigger, a uh, smaller than one, that's mean like you can check on the book. We have like basically strong as a positive strong correlation or however positive strong uh, uh, correlation. So it makes something like that. Uh, so this is like when you know like you will have a, a a correlation, a strong one, but you don't know. This is a prior, so this is you have previous knowledge. Uh, but you don't know if it's positive or negative. I don't know. It's, it seems weird in reality, but maybe it's happened. The one we always use is like a flat priors. So the Lewandowski cause Kuroyuda Joe distribution is like just a flat priors between minus one and one. And if it's bigger than one, uh, it's basically like do a bell, a bell curve, uh, meaning like we have a, a low correlation. Our prior know, like, we know there's a correlation, but it's 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 not too bad. Okay. For two, uh, we are gonna use a gamma priors. Uh, in this case, uh, we use two parameter, but it could be a, just uh, an exponential because shape and scale are the same. So this is the shape and scale parameters where we put one and scale equal one. And finally, <clears throat> This one is a bit complicated. Um, I filled on some formatting. Uh, for P, uh, we know that the sum of these two parameters uh, equal to one. Like if we remember, uh, this is where are they? 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 Um, I have an example somewhere. Where is it? No, it's, it's previous. Because it's a ratio of uh, the two terms. Uh, argue. Come on. Okay. Mouse is dead. So here, you remember, this is, this is the same. And we know, like, by definition, by construction, uh, the summit to one. This is the uh, variation between and the variation uh, within. What's the name of? Okay, where am I? Here, we are close to. So for that, we can use symmetric direct led distribution, which take two, well, this one is easy because like we have two parameters. So this is the first component of the direct led distribution. <clears throat> that can probably take n numbers of parameters and it take a concentration in pair parameters. So this is our last, um, yeah, the comp one. And uh, for this is delta, for this delta parameters, if uh, it's inferior than one, uh, that's mean like we will have like as a, a strong variability uh, of a few variability between groups that will be explained because like what all of that is for the intercept. Uh, can I show that? Yes. So this is like the. <clears throat> What we have picked is a flat prior. So in this case, it directly uh, with two um, parameters, uh, with a, it's two variable one because like we this is the one we said that two is you pick up like you know how many parameters we are using it. It's make you like a flat stuff. And if it's um, uh, greater than one, it means that we are around half of the variability between the group is explained by difference in intercept, and the rest is explained with the slope. Okay, I well I have well like uh, so that's it. So this now explain why uh, we are doing it. So that's it. So we have built our model with uh, explicit priors. I mean, even if they are weakly informed, we have specified it. So this is what we didn't know last time that we have used here, and now we are doing the simulation and the analysis. Here we are also. 
uh, adapting the delta by default is 0 0.95 and we are changing here uh, but i do not know why and those are said it was too complicated so i assume they were right <laughs> uh keep in mind now we have 78 parameters because like we are generating every intercept and every edge coefficient for every runners plus the six global parameters which is the uh let me go back to them where are they um peter uh i haven't written them which is like the beta o beta one sigma o sigma one and i miss some maybe you remember them oh uh, not, not this one where are that where are the full model I have just, yeah, I have just, oh, it's here. So you know that. So where's the model? So we have beta OC, beta one, sigma Y, the three. Um, and I guess I felt some. Does it, does it give us like the, I think this is the three other one, like the R to NP. Would make sense. Okay. I guess you do not know. <laughs> but uh no one is, but I think this this would make sense. So let's make six, six of them. So that's a lot of parameter to produce. So let's go back to the presentation. So it took me 33 minutes to run on my laptop. So this is what you were talking about on the slack group <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. and the the um, i felt my gif here but that's fine so now we have like yeah, that's a lot of parameters and it takes a lot of time to run uh so let's go to the analysis stem first we are gonna check the global group specific parameters then we are gonna go the within and between groups so if we check like uh, beta zero and beta one, we get uh, the intercepts as let's say like uh, 18.5 with like a standard deviation of uh, uh, 11 something. And the edge, the effect of edge uh, is like 1.32 going from one point uh, something to 1.5 which is i think similar to what we have before let me check should have removed that kind of we are like maybe a bit smaller like but this is very close on every like on the general model on every metrics metrics sorry uh <clears throat> Okay, then, so this is like a huge uh, MCMC object with a lot of parameters. Like <laughs> if, you, if you run it and try like to understand the structures, you will see like it's huge nested, uh, nested, nested list object. Uh, so we will do like what we have always do, like basically like uh, generating like um, <clears throat> the, we'll get the intercepts, this is beta O, and the, the B term, remember, we do not have the beta OG. What we have is the variance, uh, the um, difference between the between the between the uh, the intercept, the global intercept, and um, the variance uh, for everyone else. That's why that we have to do that. The edge is normal, so we'll spread that, and then we'll have we'll build um, kind of a, <clears throat> we'll um, pivot it to a longer format. Uh, I call it longer, but probably wider for every um, runners. Then you calculate the correct runner intercept and the correct runner edge with uh, the previous term. Uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, because like uh, this makes you like a 36 by 
20,000 row <coughs> so it's big uh, but uh, it didn't uh, um, I, I I have not running it because uh, it's too slow that's why I like it it doesn't display the results on the dimension of the object so when we summarize it a bit, uh, so I have like uh, summarize it and save it, and then load it for us because it, it took too much time. Uh, this is the result we get. This is the median, by the way. So we are like, uh, because we have a bunch of simulation and if we take the median, this is like every runners. Um, <clears throat> and, um, that, and with the slope, and um, edge coefficient specific. Did you, did you, are you surprised by something? You should. If I can help you, remember, this is what the data look like. Oh, no, I went back. Come on. This is what the data look like. And this is what the model produce on medium, on the medium. Okay, I will give you the explanation. <laughs> Maybe I should take more time or you should, uh, yeah, I should take more time. So yeah, the slope do not differ too much uh, between them. And why this is, this is because of this shrinkage because the model is trying to balance between a complete pullet model and a no pullet one. Like I can go to the, I couldn't reproduce it because like, this is like they said, slow. See, this is like <clears throat> the, they take like the runner one and runner 10. And the dashed line mm. is the, not the dashed line, the, the black line is like the complete pool. The blue line is the, um, is the um, no pool. No pool. Basically the the, the basically like we are just, doing a model for every runners. And uh, dash at one is the hierarchical rebuild with boss. So basically like it try to strike a balance between these two. That's why it looked like that. Okay. I don't know if uh, it makes sense if uh, I'm clear enough, but yeah. I mean, it was, for me, it was a surprising result. I. I I was thinking like I will get like more extreme results, like but also maybe because like the effects of edge uh, on the ring time is not also that huge, <clears throat> probably. Uh, within and between group viability. So one of the questions we should ask it like when we see that is like do modeling uh, adding like the uh, a special uh, taking into account the. Um, the effect of edge for every runners was worth it. If you check like the, like for example, the standard deviation of the edge coefficient, it's very low. So like uh, you are basically like, I don't know, uh, 0.25, that's 15 seconds. So you have like a variation of 15 seconds uh, on this uh, parameter on the edge coefficient. Is it is was it or not? This, I mean, this, this whole question depend of uh, of the or interested you are into it. Like, uh, is it is it, is this all uh, effort was worth? I don't know for running time. I don't think, but maybe some financial model. It, it could be depend of what what's this gain gain you? Uh, is it big enough? Like also like when you check, this is the correlation between the intercept and the edge coefficient. And you see like a negatively correlated, but it's that uh, it do not have a huge effect. Like, and uh, if you check like the, stand, uh, the, uh, the standard deviation uh, of the, uh, sigma y, so it's um, uh, inside a, a runners uh, from a ru from a runners. It's five minutes, and if we go back to the other one, I think we are like nearly the same. Uh, where is it? No, 
do I have like combined it somewhere? Yeah, it's here, 5.25. So we are like close, like we are speaking about seconds between like uh, the within group. Okay. Are we good? That's already one hour, so I have to go quickly. Any question? I have to hop off for my next meeting. Thank you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but uh, the, the, uh, the rest is Thank quite you. easy. We basically conclude that for the level of precision we want, uh, we do not need like uh, taking into account the edge on the, and we can just go with the, the first model, the, <clears throat> the first hierarchical model. And that's good enough. Uh, and that's it. Um, I will just add, like, for you, uh, before you go, Liza, like, this is what could be called a longitudinal analysis. But we are not taking into account that uh, people from the sage age uh, or close age uh, are correlated. So we will have to take into account this relationship. But we can, like, Co read, read in the book, and that's it. Okay. So you have survived. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Thanks right. all for the presentation. Okay. Bye bye. Well, okay. So, Federica, you're just letting me complete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will just go like basically, like quickly, like offer the model H, which is not important here because the model are fair. As, but this is always a question that you should consider when you are doing some data analysis and some data modeling. How wrong each model is and how accurate each model are, this is what we are gonna try. We see like the complete pool is bad, but we do not see um, too much difference between the running the first model where we model just, where we just take into account different slope, where there was only one we, we do slope and edge at different um, with different parameters. If we check about the prediction, they are very close to on one the predict. As are on the <clears throat> on every, every, every metric you pick, they are very close. Uh, on UGNO data, I haven't run them, but I trust the authors. Uh, that's mean like if we do cross validation, so we need to be careful between the cross validation, it will be not between the races, where, but between the runners. Uh, we, same, we do not have too much difference. So does bring us to like, uh, does this all complexity is worth it or not? And here for our work, it's no. So doing posterior prediction is the same, this is just like what we have seen last chapters. Uh, just uh, so we'll just pick like two cases, I mean, three cases. One will take uh, the first runner, and those are the 10 runners, and then we'll take one of the others, Miles, and we'll try to predict uh, the, their speed at 61 years old. So we have two sources of uncertainty for when we know. Uh, for the data that we already know. So we just need to know like the within group sampling viabilities and the posterior viabilities for our parameters. But for the author where we do not have previous data, we need to add the viability between group. So because we do not have data, we need to have like the viability. Uh, we can just choose like uh, the within group uh, sampling for the one we have, the data. But for the one we do not have, we will need to add this source of viability. And after like we are just doing the same of what we have done the previous chapter, except like the model is a bit more complicated. And obviously uh, the author have a flatter, uh, we do not know too much. Uh, the model is less confident in his prediction. I mean, it's not like it's less confident, it's uh, more like you have like, uh, you have less, uh, the, the, the results can be like more spread than for the, case where we have more information. Okay, I already explained that. Uh, 
here uh, we are making the assumption that uh, every age, every people of the same age, uh, their um, correlation is not, uh, I mean, people of the same age should uh, be more correlated, kind of. Uh, so it is possible to do that, uh, but let's go outside of here. I haven't done the five pages quick uh, example, maybe next week, I don't know. Uh, or maybe we can skip it, but uh, to some, and uh, let's do a quick summary. So first we build a regression model uh, with group G. So this is just like uh, trying to uh, do like, a, let's say a no pooled model with a, within every runners. Then uh, we'll add the, via, we'll, uh, add the viability uh, in the regression parameters between group. And finally, we set up priors. This is the whole scheme. Like uh, we drill layer one, then to uh, taking into account um, the relationship between the group, we do that by including the viability uh, there is uh, between the group. And when we all have that, we just see what prior we have and we set them. Uh, and then we, we can pick, like, as I will go with a random intercept model. So just the intercept is, um, is taking, uh, is uh, fluctuating uh, between the group. Oh, we do the intercept and slope model. Okay, thanks, Federica. <laughs> it's good. I think I spoke about it. Everyone's dead. Bye. I do my homework. <laughs> Jeez, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I tried. Did you get something? <laughs> okay. My my connection is unstable. Okay. But did you learn something? Yes, yes. Anyway, next week it's not me. Yeah. <laughs>